I'm Ashley with AB Occasion Design for Encore Event Design and you're watching Encore TV. Today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks you can use to make your wedding day run smoothly with this day of timeline. Think about your wedding's unique logistics. There are several decisions you will need to make before you can start creating your wedding day timeline. If you can answer these questions, you're probably ready to start creating your wedding day schedule. Will you be getting ready at your ceremony location or somewhere else, like a hotel room with a room block reserved for you and your guests? Are your ceremony and reception in separate locations? If so, you'll have to factor travel time into your wedding day timeline. Will you be providing transportation for your wedding party members and or guests? If so, this can make travel a bit smoother and quicker. Are you planning on having a first look and doing photos before the ceremony? or would you rather wait until cocktail hour to do couple and group portraits? How long will your ceremony be? This will require a discussion with your officiant. Will your cocktail hour take place between the ceremony and reception or before the ceremony? Will you have a receiving line? How about your toasts? Who will be speaking at your wedding reception? The special dances you will have. Does your reception venue have an end time? Make sure you know the start and stop time of your reception while planning your day of timeline. Make sure you know how much time is included in your vendor's contracts. How long will your photographer, DJ, videographer, or band be present at your wedding? Lastly, will you be hosting any after parties or day after wedding brunches? You can add those special events into your day of timeline as well. Day of timelines can be done in many ways. I'm going to show you two examples. The first example is going to be when you take your photos before the ceremony, also known as a first look. The second example is going to be photos taken after the ceremony during cocktail hour. This day of timeline is when the couple decides to do their first look before the ceremony. In this example, the ceremony start time is 4.30 and the reception begins at six with cocktail hour. Your day of timeline should begin with getting ready. You'll want to give your hair and makeup artist at least 30 minutes to set up. Stagger the arrival times so the hairstylist will arrive first, that way they can start with hair. And once the makeup artist arrives and sets up, the ladies getting their hair done will be able to move to the next station and finish with makeup. You'll want to give yourself at least five hours for getting ready. This example has two hairstylists and two makeup artists and they were doing a total of eight people. Your timing can be adjusted based on the number of stylists and people getting their hair and makeup done. The wedding party should have their hair and makeup done first with the bride being the very last one to finish. You'll want to look the best and the most fresh, so make sure you are the last one in the chair. Also let your hair stylist and makeup artist know what time you need to be done by. This is a common question and one you'll have to tell them prior to the day of and before finalizing your day of timeline. Putting a time when the bridal party and bride need to be ready is a good idea to keep everyone on track. Your day of timeline should also include when vendors arrive for setup. A good tip is that your florist cannot arrive and start setting up centerpieces before the linens are placed. The linens cannot be placed until the venue has the table set up. Make sure you know what time your venue will have the table set up and ready to go. It's a trickle-down effect. Your vendors cannot do much without the venue being ready first. Make sure you also schedule time for you and your bridal party to eat. This timeline has the groom and his party having brunch together. It's a long day with a lot of celebration and you don't want anyone to pass out. It's also very important to make sure you know how long your vendors are contracted for. Typically, a photographer will be contracted for six to eight consecutive hours. A typical day for a day of wedding is 10 plus hours. If you want to get getting ready photos, so work with them on a start and end time. It's also important to have two photographers on site that day. One can focus on the bride and her getting ready photos and then the other will go with the groom. Many photographers do have two professionals on site for a wedding, but make sure you ask that question so one person is not splitting their time in two locations. Once you confirm when you want your photographer to start, Schedule them to arrive at least 15 minutes prior to the time they should start shooting. Photographers will need some time to get their equipment set up and ready to go. 
make sure you have all your getting ready items out, such as rings, invitations, shoes, perfume, dress, jewelry, earrings, sentimental items that you want them to photograph. They usually begin with those and will need about 30 minutes to capture those intricate details. After the photographer takes the detail shots, if you have robes or getting ready outfits you'd like them to photograph you and your bridal party in, now is the time to do it before the wedding party gets dressed. The bride's wedding party should get dressed before the bride and you'll want to give them at least 15 minutes. They already have their hair and makeup done and only need to get their dresses on. Make sure your bridal party brings their dresses and personal items with them when they arrive in the morning for hair and makeup. The bride will get dressed next. At this time, you'll want to make sure your immediate family, such as your parents or siblings, are dressed and ready to go. The photographer will capture them helping you into your dress at this time and they all need to be ready. Getting into your gown should take about 15 minutes, so schedule accordingly. After everyone is dressed, the photographer will spend 30 minutes doing bridal shots of the bride along with her attendants and immediate family. At this point in the day, it's very important that your photographer have an assistant so they can be with the groom and his party taking photos at the same time. Getting ready photos for men can be scheduled when your main photographer arrives. They will spend the first hour with the men capturing photos of them and then spend 30 minutes with the groom and his party and immediate family. That way you're both ready to go for the first look. Your first look should take about 10 minutes. At this time, have your bridal party take their items back to their room or have them clean up the bridal suite. The last thing you want to do when you arrive back to your room after your wedding is have your bridal party stopping by to get something they forgot. After the first look is done, the photographer will spend about 30 minutes doing bride and groom portraits um, in, at the hotel, the getting ready location, or the surrounding areas. This timeline example has a getting ready reception, has a getting ready location, reception, and ceremony locations just a block away from each other. If you are planning on having to drive from the getting ready location to the ceremony, you must factor in travel time. A good rule of thumb is if your ceremony is 30 minutes away and you have a limo bus, schedule an hour. This is to include traffic, travel time, and it also takes larger vehicles longer to travel, so keep that in mind. Always make sure you're at the ceremony location 30 minutes prior to the start of the ceremony. Some ceremony locations or churches may require you to be an hour before, so you should also take that into consideration. When you arrive at your ceremony location, make sure you do any last minute touch-ups and be ready to go 10 minutes prior to the start of your ceremony. Ceremonies last anywhere from 15 to 60 minutes. So after that, make the adjustment um, based on your personalized ceremony. After the ceremony, most couples will have family photos. These can take anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes. When scheduling photos with your photographer, make sure everyone who you want a photo with knows ahead of time and stays at the front of the church or the ceremony location. Once Aunt Linda walks back to the back of the church after the ceremony, chances of her getting back up front for photos is slim to none. Make sure you keep all VIPs at the front of the church after the ceremony. If you are doing a receiving line, I would schedule 45 to 60 minutes for that. Again, it is flexible based on the number of guests, but another good rule of thumb is that if you have 100 guests, schedule 35 to 45 minutes for a receiving line. Also make sure your photographer has a list of photos you want. Your photographer will let you know what you need to, um, what you will need, but start working on the list of people you want with your family, the photos that you want with your family and friends. After family photos are done, you should schedule at least 45 to 60 minutes for bridal party photos with the bride and groom along with their attendants. Remember, this example has a ceremony within walking distance to the reception, so they do not have to consider travel time. It is your wedding day after all, but be mindful of your guests. You should keep the time between the ceremony and reception under 90 minutes. Anything longer may have your guests waiting around or they may skip out on your ceremony and just come to the reception. Couples who do a first look will spend some extra time taking photos during cocktail hour. This is a nice little cushion of time to get any photos that you have had not the chance to take prior to the ceremony. This timeline also allows 
the couple to enjoy their own private cocktail hour while their bridal party heads to the main cocktail hour. Your day is so busy, you need to make sure you eat. So take that extra time to breathe and prepare to head into the reception. Cocktail hours are about 60 minutes. Usually around 45 minutes, guests start to get antsy, so you can always have your MC announce that guests can take their seats for the reception after 45 minutes. That way it'll take about 10 to 15 minutes for them to find their seats, grab another drink before the bar closes for dinner. In this timeline example, once the reception begins, the order of the events are as follows. The bride and groom will enter into the ballroom and start their first dance. After they sit down, their father of the bride will give a welcome speech, followed by a blessing. During this, after the blessing, guests will enjoy their first, first course, which is a salad. During that time, the maid of honor will give her speech, followed by the best man. Once salads have been eaten and they are cleared, the bride and groom will get up to cut the cake. After that, that will allow time for the, the venue staff to serve dinner. You do want to take in consideration that dinner should be about an hour. Timing for these um, can vary, but I usually give about five minutes for each of the special dances and speeches. Your day of timeline should be really specific like this one to help your venue know what will be coming next. You should always consider hiring a day of coordinator to help with putting one together and who will also be on site to help with the flow of the day. After dinner, your day of timeline can flow however you want. After dinner can be cake cutting, more speeches, special dances, etc. If you hire a band, take into consideration their breaks. Also, your vendors need to eat. Make sure you work with your venue to feed your vendors and give them downtime to have dinner. This usually happens when you're eating dinner. Schedule in when your reception is over, when the florists will arrive, and other vendors will arrive for cleanup. Also put in when your photographer and videographer will depart, and if you're having any special snacks or dinners such as this one, you can also put that in your day of timeline. I always like to give a farewell song and then the end of the reception, so that way everyone will know what time um, is expected for the party to over, to be over. And also at the end, set up um, vendors will come and pick up their items. So that is the day of timeline for first look. Stay tuned, and I will go over a day of timeline for those who would like to take pictures after their ceremony. Here's a day of timeline for the couple who would like to do their photos after the ceremony. We have the makeup artist arriving shortly before the hairstylist. Again, make sure you stagger those so that way you can get the ladies in the chair for makeup and then when the hairstylist arrives, they can go from makeup to hair. In this particular day of timeline, we had a larger group of folks getting their hair and makeup done, so this is five and a half hours. Again, this will be adjusted based on how many people who are doing hair and makeup. For this instance, we had one makeup artist and two hairstylists. You can also separate for when the moms come in to do their hair and makeup. Sometimes mom would like to do just hair and no makeup or makeup and no hair. So you can also have them come later so that way they're ready to go and not sitting around all morning. Um, but it's always nice to have them there too. I cannot stress enough that you must eat. We did schedule in time for the groom to meet in the groom's room for brunch while the ladies would eat during hair and makeup. It is really important to put down in your timeline when the linens will be down. As in the other timeline, you want to make sure that the venue is set up and linens are down before you schedule any time for your vendors to arrive. It's also important to ask your florist when the personal flowers will be delivered. If you would like to get your picture taken with your bouquet and getting ready, you wanna make sure those are delivered to you before the ceremony. Oftentimes the florist will bring the flowers to the ceremony and you may want them prior to for pictures. If you have a videographer, please make sure that you schedule when they will arrive. It's also good along with a photographer to have two videographers so that way one is with the bride and one is with the groom. I always like to highlight when vendors arrive in red, so that way you know as well as your vendor coordinator or day of coordinator will know when to look and when to make sure they greet their vendors. 
This day of timeline also has a lot of travel time. They were getting ready in Oakland and they had to drive all the way to the North Hills in Pittsburgh for their ceremony. Here you'll see that the groom wanted to also ride in the party bus. So the party bus picked up the groom early at 1230 while the women were still getting ready. You may have to make those adjustments to decide what is important to you. For this particular timeline, the groom and the bride really wanted both parties to ride in the bus on the way to the ceremony. So you may have to adjust and leave a little bit earlier to accommodate that. We have the bride getting ready and dressed. Again, that's 30 minutes. And then we go into the bridal shots of the bride, attendants, and immediate family. The photographer will often also depart with either the bride or groom, so make sure you work with them. They will probably ride to the ceremony with you if you do have a limo or a party bus. When the photographer left the women, they did get to the ceremony and they were able to get shots of the groom with the, his bridal party and parents. So you can also adjust and add that in as well. Oftentimes videographers will need about 30 minutes to set up for the ceremony, so keep that in mind. You never want to schedule back to back because you never know how long it could take to travel as well as set up. So the bride did leave the university club at two o'clock and she got there at three o'clock. The ceremony did not start until 3.30. So make sure you always arrive about 30 minutes prior to the ceremony to make sure you use the restroom and do any last minute touch-ups. This was a Greek Orthodox church wedding, so it was a little bit longer. We had an hour for the ceremony. After the ceremony, the couple did do family photos at the church with their immediate family from 4.30 to 5. In the last timeline, I did mention, and I cannot stress this enough, please make sure you let any folks who you would like to get pictures with the day of your wedding let them know ahead of time that they are to wait in the church. Do not get up and exit. So that way you can start immediately with photos. Putting people together in photos can take a long time. So you always want to make sure you alert them as well as give the list to the photographer of all the pictures and the names of individuals in each photo. We had about 30 minutes for bridal party photos with the bride and groom at the church in front of the altar. And then we did give about 30 minutes for travel time from the ceremony to Oakland. They did arrive at 610 and they had pictures outside of their uh, reception space. You do wanna make sure when you are doing photo locations that you are not driving all over town. That does take up a lot of time. And at this timeline, there was 90 minutes in between the ceremony and the reception. The couple did have about 15 minutes for downtime. This is a really good time to use the restroom, get a bite to eat, have a drink, and really just enjoy time with your, your new husband or wife. We also do like to schedule in sunset photos. So if you are big into that, you know, the sunset or the golden hour, which a lot of photographers like to call it, you can schedule that into your timeline. Here the reception started at six o'clock with cocktail hour. Again, cocktail hours should be anywhere from um, 45 to 60 minutes. And it does take about 15 minutes to move guests. From, for this specific timeline, they went from the top floor to the bottom floor and we had an elevator. So um, keep that in mind too. If you want the reception to start at seven, you do need to give a couple minutes um, cushion time to get everyone to their seats. Introductions of parents, bridal party, and bride and groom, be about five minutes for that. They went right into the blessing of the meal, followed by the father's um, toast, father of the bride's toast. In this particular wedding, the staff did serve the salad while speeches are given. And this is actually really nice because it allows folks who are eating their salad to listen to speeches. After the speeches were done, the salads were cleared and then the bridesmaids gave their toast, best man, father of the groom, and then dinner. Again, you want to make sure you incorporate about an hour for dinner. The bridal couple will always eat first. So after dinner was over or as dinner was finishing up, we had the bride and groom cut their cake. They went into their first dance, followed by the special dances, father, daughter, mother, son, and then the dance floor opened up for dancing. For this particular wedding, the photographer did leave. Um, you probably only need about an hour 
once dancing starts, an hour to 30 minutes for the photographer to take pictures. They don't need to be there for longer than that because you can only get so many pictures of folks dancing. The wedding was over at 11 and I, as a day of coordinator, started cleaning up their items. They did a farewell song and then they had a special exit. They had sparklers. So if you do wanna do a special exit, you do need to take into consideration if you want your photographer to capture that, they may need to be there longer than the six to eight hours. And then me, Ashley, departed for the evening at 11.30. So that is the timeline for couples who would like to do pictures after their ceremony. So really the biggest thing to take in consideration for your day of timeline is really what you want. If you wanna do pictures beforehand and you do wanna you know, enjoy cocktail hour, do a first look. If you don't wanna see each other till you're walking down the aisle, you may need to schedule extra time after the ceremony, but not too long because guests do not like to sit around for two plus hours waiting for the um, cocktail hour to begin. That in a nutshell is our two timelines. So if you have any questions, you can always find us online at AB Occasion Design or Encore Event Design. Thank you for joining us on Encore TV and we hope you have a great day. Joining me on Encore TV today. I'm Ashley from AB Occasion Design for Encore Event Design. Check us out on Instagram, follow us, and like all of our work and we hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or need any assistance for with event planning, coordination or design, look us up on social media and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.